the best mechanical keyboard is not always one and the same as those built to gaming specifications. If you're looking for a keyboard that prioritizes a typing experience palatable to productivity or ergonomics suitable for an 8-hour workday then you've come to the right place. The keyboard's plastic chassis rests under a sleek brushed aluminum cover, which comes in matte black or gunmetal options. The Platinum utilizes a standard 104-key layout with a bank of six macro keys stationed along the left side of the keyboard for mapping additional functions. A trio of buttons lets you quickly switch between onboard profiles, adjust backlighting brightness, and disable the Windows key. There is also a row of dedicated media controls, which have changed slightly from Corsair's previous model, from a dome shape to something resembling a more traditional keycap. Unlike the membrane or recessed mechanical keys seen on the DAS Keyboard 4 Professional or the Cherry MX Board 3.0, the raised mechanical keys on the K95 Platinum give the frame a wide berth, leaving few places for the typical keyboard detritus to collect. The keyboard weighs just less than 3 pounds and measures 7 by 18 by 2 inches. Adding the wrist rest increases the footprint to 10 by 18 by 2 inches, but remains a modest addition to any office or gaming setup. The layout of the K95 Platinum remains as clean and unobtrusive as its predecessor, with little to distract you from the keys themselves. It comes packaged with a reversible wrist rest, which, while not as lavish as the padded leatherette finish offered on some Razer models, does offer the option of switching between a smooth or textured finish. The underside features an X-shaped channel for conveniently routing headset cables underneath the unit. A USB port is also placed on the top edge of the keyboard, although there is a curious absence of an audio jack. The dimensions of the K95 Platinum are where it most obviously diverges from the design of the Vengeance, reducing the overall size and weight by removing excessive macro keys. One of our biggest pet peeves when it comes to gaming keyboards in general is just how big they can get. You'll constantly find these huge, foreboding slabs of plastic jutting out of the sides of a lot of keyboards. Luckily, the SteelSeries Apex Pro avoids this trend. The aluminum frame of this laptop is just big enough to house it, without too much excess. There is no space wasted on the sides, as the Apex Pro virtually ends where the keys stop. This minimalist design wins at big points as far as we're concerned. In fact, if it wasn't for the wrist rest, this keyboard would take up about as much space as your standard office keyboard, luckily the wrist rest is magnetically attached. We wouldn't advise removing the wrist rest, however, as it's covered in a soft faux rubber material that is incredibly comfortable. The wrist rest is usually something we abandon right away, but we're still using it with the Apex Pro. The key caps are elevated above the keyboard deck, giving the keyboard a very modern and clean aesthetic. And, while they are made of plastic, they still feel solid and premium. Above the number pad, you're going to find an OLED display, a volume wheel that you can click into mute, and a media key which will play slash pause your music by default. This OLED display will allow you to set a custom image, or even a GIF, further boosting the customization of this keyboard. The Logitech G Pro is a tenless keyboard. This means it does not have a noom pad, so its footprint is far smaller than a full-size one. Talk of esports might make you think of a pro gamer stashing a Logitech G Pro into their bag, alongside a favorite mouse, to tournaments, but there are other potential benefits for a smaller keyboard like this. Logitech has also made an important tweak for those who will stash and dash. The G Pro's Microsb connector is removable, to avoid cable stress damage when carried around in a bag. It also uses stabilizers to avoid connector wobble. There's no palm rest, though. The keyboard's end is abrupt. But you can set it at three angles for comfort, flat, or with 4 8 degrees of upward tilt. Dig deep enough into the keyboard community, and you'll see Logitech keyboards criticized for their use of cheap plastics. This does not ring true using the G Pro. Its surround is matte plastic, but there's zero flex to it and the insides of the keyboard are mounted on a plate of steel for rigidity. The Logitech G Pro is also a great-looking keyboard. It's minimal, and the key font has just a slightly bolder, more aggressive character than the all-business Philco Magistouch 2. The RGB backlight is the real star here, and the reason the bold keycap font works. The DOS Keyboard 4 Q's design will look a little strange to newcomers but familiar to anyone who has already used its non-Q predecessors. It's a full keyboard, but it also features an enlarged top right corner that almost makes it look like a blunt weapon. Some of this extra space is occupied by the dedicated media controls, an oversized volume knob, 
and Q line specific sleep and Q buttons. Also up here is the DOS keyboard logo. The keyboard's top panel is anodized aluminum. DOS keyboard used ABS plastic for the keycaps, and they feel a bit hollow as a result, but that's likely because the company needed to etch out the keycap label into each one to show the RGB lights underneath. That's also why the DOS Keyboard 4Q comes equipped with Cherry MX RGB switches that feature a transparent switch housing designed to let each key's custom lighting shine through. The DOS Keyboard 4Q comes only with Cherry MX RGB brown key switches. Mechanical keyboard officiants have strong preferences when it comes to switches, and I suspect some prospective buyers will be holdouts for other kinds, such as the classic, super clicky MX Blue. But the MX Brown is often cited as a good compromise switch, so if you like the feel, you're in luck. All of these changes from the base DOS Keyboard 4 design serve their intended purpose, which is to say, giving the Q variant of the keyboard attractive RGB lighting, but I don't quite like the implementation of lighting on this keyboard quite as much as I've liked it on others. The default brightness is a little dim, especially if you're using the DOS Keyboard 4 Q in a well-lit room, and the associated brightness adjust key works in only one direction. The Freestyle Edge RGB improves a number of features on the first Freestyle Edge, but it is very much an upgrade of that original model. Like the original Freestyle, the split keyboard comprises two half keyboards, made of hard, matte gray plastic. The halves are connected by up to 20 inches of braided cable, giving you plenty of slack to configure the boards as you see fit. The keys are set in what's known in Key Geek lingo as a 75% layout, which has a similar number of keys as a 10 keyless board, but in a tighter configuration. Some of the keys found in a separate section on most standard keyboards, such as Page Up, Page Down, and Print Screen, have been pushed into the upper right-hand corner. Packing in the keys this way cuts down on the layout size, which is good because it can take up a lot of space, but it hikes up the learning curve for players who are new to Ergo keyboards. If you are considering giving a split keyboard a try for the first time, you should know that transitioning to one takes time, patience, and practice. Even though the keys were in the same relative places, I found it takes extra time to get acquainted with the idea of using your two hands separately, and uniquely, on the two parts of the board. On top of that, Kinesis Optional Lift Kit, which adds adjustable feet to the inner sides of the board, creates an inverted V10 angle that you obviously cannot experience on a standard keyboard. This is not a condemnation, but simply a warning, split keyboard novices should expect to spend a few weeks adjusting to the change.